my name is Donald Carter. Uh, I'm on the streets, they call me Boss Hog. I grew up liking motorcycles, and I got a chance to be in a motorcycle club. And uh, I started, I got my first motorcycle, and I used to ride every day, every Sunday. I ride through the park of 4 5 and everywhere. Before 4 5 even started, we rode through Balboa Park and rode every Sunday all around town. Until I ran into this cat that told us that, hey, you guys should be in the club because uh, you certainly must be together on Sunday the afternoons anyway. And uh, his name was Jody. And he introduced himself to me because I had a couple of motorcycles that for sale. He needed to buy a motorcycle. And he told me he was in a club in Los Angeles called the Royal Aces. And we spoke about it. And uh, he told me he would take me up there and introduce me to the people and see if we could start a chapter in San Diego. So um, I took it back to the people that we ride with every day on Sundays and afternoons and, you know, Saturday afternoons, and pretty much the majority of them was all for it. So um, Jody took me to Los Angeles, and uh, introduced me to his club called the Royal Aces, and I asked for permission if I could start a club in San Diego. And they um, told me they would have to vote, vote it in one day on club meetings, so it's uh, they gave me a phone number and told me if I brought back 12 dudes that was interested in starting a club, they would put it on the ballot and they would vote for it. So in the next couple of weeks, I brought back 22 riders from San Diego to Los Angeles. First time I've been to San Diego, Los Angeles on a motorcycle. And we had a vote that night and they voted us in. Uh, start a chapter in San Diego. So the president and the uh, International president at that time, uh, Big Johnny and Big Man, their names were, and they gave me a, a set of bylaws and a phone number and told me, Good luck, go home and uh, select your cabinet. So we came home to San Diego, and the next week we had a meeting over uh, a friend's house in his garage, a guy by the name of Tony, and we had our first elections. I myself was voted president, a guy named Jimmy Thomas was voted vice president, a guy named Dre was voted road captain, and we had a guy that his name was Bayard, but he was not really in the club because he didn't want to be in the club, but he was always being our secretary. We didn't have no business manager, and we had a, quite a few other little members that were like, Patrick was one of the first members of the club that's still in the club. And a guy named Twan in Los Angeles, one of the first members that's still in the club. And we had our first election, and we went from there. We started growing from there. Started getting more positive and positive. Then we got down the line, um, eight months down the line. This, this was in the latter part of 87. And then we got to the latter part of uh, the first beginning of 88. And we had like a mutiny on the ballot. Everybody wanted to change over and have a new lesson because some people maintained the guys that was garage we was using every day. He wanted to be president for some reason. I don't know. Authority makes people, I guess. So we had another election. I've been a young club. We didn't know we were supposed to have an election that, that soon. We had another election. and They elected him president and elected me vice president. They kept everything else the same. So I was vice president, and he was president, but I still was business manager and everything else. So that lasted about three months. He didn't stand up to the job. We impeached him three to four months later. Our first roundup we went to, he didn't attend. We went to a roundup. Our first dance, he didn't attend. We had, that's what made us impeach him. So I, I was vice president, acting president, for about 19 months, a long time, before you implicate another election or nothing. So we went on from there, and then I just became president. And um, we had our first and second dance in different places in San Diego, like down on Imperial. It wasn't called uh, Legends then. It was called something else, the safety club or anything. 
and we've been moving on since then. We had our picnics at one time, it was on Sundays, and instead of Saturdays, and we had them in a different date in July, not around the first year, first of the year. We swapped dates with uh, the Zodiacs. They had this original date, uh, Valentine's Day weekend, first run of the year. And we swapped with them about uh, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And, uh, and we moved it to picnic day from Sunday to Saturday. And that's been a really great positive thing for us. And um, ever since then, we've been dealing with structure and keeping our name clean and doing what's right out there and riding safe. And we've been a great growing club. And uh, Patrick can tell you that, you know, everybody that's come around us is like glue. They want to stick to us and be be one of us. You know? Anybody can ride a motorcycle, but everybody can't be an ace. So, Patrick, you know, maybe you want to say something. Well, my name is Patrick Shaw. Um, I'm the vice president, retired as well. Uh, my nickname in the club is Gucci. When I became a uh, Royal Ace, I was in the Navy, and uh, this was different. I've always had something to do with motorcycles. I've been riding motorcycles since I was about eight years old, and uh, I won't tell you how old I am now. It's been a long time. <laughs> anyway, um, the Royal Aces was made up of all brothers from all walks. Um, I was the baby of the bunch back then. I was the youngest guy in the club. Uh, I was a hothead. I like riding wheelies like a lot of the young guys do now, except nowadays they ride them on the front wheel as well as the rear wheel. Um, but uh, when I went to 4-5 Park back then, when I got off of work, it was like that was happy hour. Everybody would go to 4-5 Park. It was packed on a Friday afternoon after 3 o'clock, and people would stay there until the sun went down. And as Royal Aces, uh, before then, before we became the club, we would all ride out to Mission Beach, hang out there for a minute, and then we'd come back, and we'd be all over the road. And uh, one time, we got, uh, it was the uh, old, uh, it was in the summertime, and San Diego police, police was waiting for us. We were coming back and they swarmed us. There was a pretty much a police for a policeman for every motorcycle that was coming back, and we all spread all over the place trying to get away from them. Um, I think it was uh, Dre who uh, initially got caught, <laughs> but uh, after that, it was you know it, it had to be a better way of doing things. When when boss came back and had a way of bringing us all together so that we can go from point A to point B safely. It was, it was like a no-brainer. Um, since then, as far as being a Royal Ace, it made it so that we could not only ride together, but we could, not, we could be, be that brotherhood that we've always wanted to be. Um, we stuck close to each other. I mean, we met every week. There's clubs nowadays that meet once a month. But even right now, we still meet every week. <laughs> right now, we meet every week. Uh, of course, in between functions, sometimes we stretch it out to two weeks, but never more than that. Uh, but the guys helped me understand what the importance was of not only being safe on the motorcycle, uh, but it also helped me understand what it really truly meant to be a, a biker on the set. When it came to my career as far as the Navy goes, that we had people that were pimps, <laughs> we had people that did all kind of fun stuff back in the day. But those guys always made sure that I continued on my path of being a career man in the Navy. They made sure that I was going to retire. At one point when I was young, I thought I was going to get out and I was going to be a full-time biker. But there was guys like Boss that told me to keep my little narrow butt in there and finish it up, finish strong. And I did. I retired in 2006. Came back to San Diego, and I took up the torch to keep it moving. Um, I'm the one founding member that still rides with the club. Uh, the rest of the members, you know, they've aged well. They've had medical disabilities here or there. 
but they are strong boys in what we have to continue to move on with. Um, the Royal Ace chapter is now very strong. Our picnic was just better than ever than it was, you know, it's just been in, over the years. Every year it gets stronger and stronger. Um, when it comes to the motorcycles, the guys keep the bikes up, everybody keeps the job they own straight and narrow. The big thing that's changed over the years that I've noticed is that many of us are married now. We've all kind of grown up. But the really cool thing is we've got a lot of younger guys that are coming in now that are still young and ready to, you know, be an ace. They're ready to do something different. They're ready to, to, to learn from the old guys. And that's another benefit that we have. Because we have founding members that still participate with the club, they're able to keep the traditions going. They're able to keep the, the, uh, uh, the, the bylaws uh, upheld. And we're able to do things that we really like to do. Is that, um, do you see a difference from the Royal Aces from the 80s and when you guys got it going and the Royal Aces of today as far as, um, I guess, loyalty and, uh, and, uh, and how they carry themselves? Um, yeah, it's a difference be because um, originality seems to have a, 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 a bigger job, like in setting, in, in uh, placing the stepping stones for the newer guys to follow. Some newer guys are hot-headed and they want to do things their way and want to change structure. But once you have a, a building that has a great foundation. There's no reason to change any structure. Just go along with the structure at hand. But new technology and everything come around that the newer people want to change and everything. But pretty much overall, if the true ones that want to really be there, want to be with the nucleus, they end up being there because you could tell as soon as you know <clears throat> if a person that really belongs and, and if he don't belong. Because in my family, I grew up with a uh, the point about working. Did the job quit you or did you quit the job? Everybody say, oh, I quit work. You know, sometimes the job quits you. And believe uh, believe me, we have quit a lot of people. I Meaning we sent them on down the road kicking beer cans. And a lot of them wish they are back with us today. Because they, some of them just don't fit in. That's why I say anybody can ride a motorcycle, but everybody can't be an ace because they just don't fit in the criteria that we set forth for them to be with. Another thing is, there are many things that motorcycle club of the past didn't require. They didn't require guys to have licenses and registrations or insurance. We require that. We require that you don't, you can't be riding dirty and be a roll ace. You have to have all your fact, all your, all your uh, documents together, uh, and because we can't have a reason to get pulled over. And then you got to get on the back of somebody's bike because you already got your stuff together. <laughs> that's that's a that's a bad thing. So um, there, there's a lot of things that have changed a lot more. Uh, motorcycles nowadays, like us, we cops come behind us, we pull over. It's not about running from them. It's we have nothing to run for. If we're speeding, we pull over, we stop. We got a ticket. Most times they let us go. I mean, actually, when when we've gotten pulled over in the past, I've never seen it where they actually given us a ticket. They just Check us to make sure that we're good to go, and we just roll on our way. Yeah. What do you guys' view on the on the set today, as far as um, we got all these clubs in and out, with the exception of the ones that have been around a while? But uh, what's your take on the set and what's been going on in the last couple of months? My take is everybody wants wants a name for himself. Instead of going with somebody that's already clicking and being around for a while, every, every, all these new dudes coming around, they all just to, just to click in their little neighborhoods or whatever, and they treat it like um, the set like it's like it's gang oriented. No, it's not. It's not a gang oriented thing. That's why they treat it like that. Every little click wants a motorcycle club. There's so three or four people together. Now they're a club. Uh, instead of going to be with somebody that's already fully established and recognized up and down the coast of uh, California, then that's the way it should be. But these new dudes is kind of messing the set up. You know, they're making it too havoc and too uh, unsafe to even be around and all the shootings and stupidiness that's going on around 
You know, they're taking the fun out of what's really what's, what it's meant to be. I agree. Um, I think that this new trend of stopping traffic, I think it's really a bad thing. Uh, a bad thing for motorcycle clubs. Um, the uh, movie came out a few years ago, The Biker Boys. A lot of guys took that as Bible, and they started just popping up left and right. When I left San Diego, there was about seven clubs here, including the Buffalo Soul. When I came back, there were 56 clubs. And none, it seemed like they, nobody knew what they were doing. They, uh, they tried to establish new councils, and, and they end up calling guys like myself or boss. They'll call us and ask us for advice. And next thing we know, we they'll go against our advice. I don't know why. You know, why bother even calling us if you want to go against the advice that we give you? And they'll go against the advice, and they'll just start at the club and say, okay, we're this or we're that. And we were advised by... Gucci and the Royal Aces, and I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's not the case. We didn't advise you to start a club. We advise you to learn before you go. We are, I, I will always be first. I don't care if you don't join my club, but I'll advise you to join a club that way you can prospect and learn what is really going on on a motorcycle set. Don't, just don't go put a patch on your back and jump out there and think that you're going to be cool and people are going to take you in and respect. That's not always the case cases that you need to make sure that you actually, you know, took time out to learn it. There's actually books out here nowadays that let you go out and learn it. But we're seeing a lot of folks that come up and just as quick as they come up, they go away. What are you, as far as the Royal Aces today and moving on forward, what are you guys are hoping to uh, what do you expect, actually, from the Royal Aces of today, moving on forward? Uh, what we expect, expect, and what are our goals? Our goals is to um, establish ourselves in another home, which is a, another motorcycle uh, club. Um, reach out to the community as, um, in charity work and um, do what we can for uh, the children of our, our area. Southeast area and handing out toys during Christmas or handing out turkeys during Thanksgiving. You know, anything that we can do promote in our area, the area that we live in, the 92114 district, you know, and uh, we don't have nothing against no one else area, but every time we, we're always helping out somewhere else when there's a lot of work need to be done in our own area. That's what the goal of the Rural Aces is. We're going to step up the, uh, the community and our charity work in our own community to build up our, our own thing. And to add to what uh, also, also we're looking at the educational opportunities, uh, scholarships for a lot of the kids that are well deserving that don't, they, they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to pick up the, the necessary tools they need to further their education. Um, to establish a, some type of scholarship foundation that we can contribute to, to a, a worthy student, you know, that, that's really trying out there that, you know, they're falling just a little short financially. I think that's going to be an, an outstanding uh, program that we establish here in our community at San Diego.